Emerging dramatically from two years of seclusion in his castle three weeks ago, Salvador Dali was a pathetic sight, badly burnt after a fire in his bedroom, a sick recluse suffering severe malnutrition. His last years were spent in the Torre Galatea, part of the medieval fortifications of Figueras, next to Dali's theatre museum. There he starved, obstinately refusing solid food, taking liquids by a tube through his nose. We were very... We were Spaniard. We were Catalonia. No years with Gala can have been more miserable than those he spent without her. In January 1989, in the local hospital, he died. When great retrospective exhibitions seemed to sanitize the man and his imagination, to suggest that he could do no wrong, to counter the critical dismissal that had been the informed view of him for years, I wanted to shout that I knew another Dali, a dirty Dali, so to speak, a Dali who had always, since a boy, had a filthier imagination than any army sergeant humiliating raw recruits. I wanted to tell of his hundreds of obscene drawings, a lifetime of them squirrelled away in Port Ligat, the early ones so delicate, the late so lavatorial and crude. I wrote the necessary note when Gala died. But when Dali followed her, and I'm certain that he thought of it as following, for he had followed her every day since their first meeting, there was no one to whom I could express my grief, except myself. And I did genuinely grieve. Now, all these years later, I realize that despite the obscenity, the pornography, the corruption, and the hostile critics, the public had been right and is right still. Dali deserves his reputation as the last of the great old masters. Next on 4 we get some instant karma with a brand new video exclusive from Green Day and that's followed by Mercury Music Prize winner Dizzy Rascal filling us in on his musical journey so far at 10 past 12. <laughs> 